All right, so we're looking at 9.6 area of composite figures, which starts on page 717. So the first part is that they want you to scan the lesson and list two real-world scenarios in which you would use the area of composite figures. So I'd like you to pause the video now and come up with two real-world scenarios in which you would use the area of composite figures. So these are the two examples that I thought up just because recently I've done both of these things. So recently I had to um, buy tile for the kitchen floor that my husband and my dad were working on. And so I needed to figure out what the square footage was to figure out how much tile to buy. <clears throat> now, I don't know about you, but my kitchen floor is not a perfect rectangle or square. So um, there are a lot of different areas we need to find, like the you know pantry closet that's right inside my kitchen. I had to find the area of that little space there and then add it to the big space. And then, of course... Um, you know, my cabinets come out at an angle, and so I had to kind of figure out, well, I would need partial tiles for that space right there. So it was something that was finding the area of a composite figure because it wasn't just a rectangle. Um, painting the stairway wall. If you want to figure out how much paint to buy to be able to paint your stairway wall, if you think about it, if you can picture stairs going up, that's kind of like giving you um, an angle that you're going up at, let's say, but then the the ceiling is a whole other story, and so for my for my stairs going up into the loft, um, you know I've got like a lower ceiling, and then it opens up, and so I've got a higher wall. Um, so it's just like this a bunch of crazy shapes put together, and so that's exactly a good example of the area of composite figures, crazy shapes. All right, so a composite figure is a figure made of two or more two dimensional figures. So a composite figure shown to the right is made of two rectangles. Draw a composite figure made of a rectangle and a triangle on the graph paper below. So go ahead and draw something. Could be anything, just make sure it fits on that little piece of paper that they're giving you there. Then I'll come back and I'll show you mine. So pause your video. All right, and here's my little figure. You know, you could have something that's more like um, a triangle like that or whatever. Um, but basically we've got a rectangle and a triangle. So yours could be looking a little different, it's okay. All right, so here's a picture of our pool. Now, you know, some pools are just perfect, they're rectangles and that's it. But you notice that this one, where the stairs come out, they actually um, separated that from the original pool, maybe made a little trapezoid there. So when we're finding the area of this pool, um, it's not as cut and dry as just a rectangle. We're also finding the area for the stairwell as well. So what two-dimensional figures are used to make the shape of the pool? In my opinion, I see the rectangle and I see the trapezoid. And maybe you would feel differently. Maybe you see something different. All right. So I'd say trapezoid and rectangle. And it says, how could you determine the area of the pool? Well, in my case, I would find the area of the rectangle, and then I'd find the area of the trapezoid, and that would be the area of the entire pool. So to find the area of a composite figure, you can decompose some trapezoids into a square and a triangle to find the area. So in this case, this is kind of um, similar to what I had done before, but this is a square and a triangle. They decided that Instead of finding the area of a trapezoid, you could just find the area of the square or rectangle and then of the triangle. Um, and then add those two spaces together and that's going to give you the area of the trapezoid. So the area of the trapezoid is going to be the area of the square plus the area of the triangle, which will be 12 square units. So you can find the area of a composite figure using that same strategy. Um, they're not always going to be as easy as a trapezoid. Um, there's going to be some crazy looking shapes as you probably already saw from doing the inquiry lab. So to find the area of a composite figure you separate it into figures with areas that you know how to find and then you add those areas. Now here's the thing is that we haven't gone over the area of a circle so if things are rounded out I would normally say let's find it as a circle or semicircle but we're not doing that in sixth grade this year so what we're going to do is we're just going to have to um, take that rounded off edge and make it 
a square or a rectangle kind of edge, a straight line. So you'll see those kind of examples when we when we go further. All right, so here we have, let's see, let me come out a little bit here. All right, so here we have find the area of the figure at the right. Um, the figure can be separated into a rectangle and a triangle. Find the area of each. So the rectangle and triangle, um, the area of the rectangle, they basically took their line and went across here. And they have the area of the rectangle is going to be length times width or base times height, which is 10 times 6. So this base here is going to be 60 inches squared. And then the area of the triangle, the height um, is 4 inches, they say. And the length here, well, if this is 6 inches and this whole thing on the bottom is 10 inches, then this missing part here would be 4 inches. And so they've given us the 4 inches by four inches, so one half times base times height, one half of four is two, two times four is eight. And so to find the area of the entire figure here, we would add the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle, because they're not overlapping, okay? That's something else that I wanna point out is that these are not overlapping shapes, these are separated shapes. So I could literally take off this triangle and put it over here, and I would still have a rectangle as my base. Now. I couldn't um, I couldn't find the area of this rectangle and then say I got it because then I'm including my triangle in that area formula. Well, I hope that made sense. Made sense to me. All right, so let's do A and B here. Um, go ahead and do uh, A and I'll come back with the answer and then we'll do the same thing with B. Pause your video now. Okay, so the area for A is going to be 60 feet squared. I found the area of my rectangle, and which was 12 by 4, and then I found the area of my um, triangle. Now, the triangle, I actually had to find my dimensions because you notice that for the triangle, they didn't show the dimensions for either one. But I know that this whole bottom is 12, so this whole thing would be 12. If from here to here is 8, then from here to here is 4. That's how I found that part. And then um, when I was going the other direction, trying to find this space, I knew that across from here, if this was 4, then this is 4. If this whole thing is 10, then this section is going to be 6. So I knew that my triangle was 6 by 4. So I find 1 half of base times height, and then it ends up being 12 feet squared. And I combine my 48 feet squared and my 12 feet squared, and we get 60 feet squared. I know it's a lot of work because you're having to use um, the formulas and several times, but um, and sometimes to you know even worse than what we have here. But it's important for you to get the practice in, and it's really just taking an equation and plugging in the numbers that you know, substituting. All right, so now I'm going to do B. I'll come back in just a moment. Pause the video if you haven't finished B yet. All right, and our answer for B is going to be. <clears throat> Um, the area, the way that I took it anyway, and you could have done um, a completely different thing by going this direction too, um, but the way that I did it is I separated it into this rectangle, which was 10 by 5, and then the trapezoid, which was 10 by 7 with a height of 2. And I figured that 2 out because if this was 5, this section was 5, then this section had to be 2 to make, excuse me, to make that side 7. All right, and so my total area was 67 meters squared. Number two said find the area of the pool's floor. Separate the figure into a rectangle and a trapezoid. So this is our same example from the very beginning but now we're actually going to find the area of this swimming pool, just the floor. So um, it says to separate the figure into a rectangle and a trapezoid and the rectangle would be um, 28 by 14 and then the trapezoid would be let's see this is 4 the height is 2 and this bottom part I covered up is 6 and so when I do the 1 half times height times base plus base it's going to be 10 and they've got that right here and the rectangle is going to be 392 we add those two pieces together and we find out that the area of the school, those pool's floor is 402 square feet. So now you're going to do um, C 
find the area, and then we'll come back. Pause the video. All right, for this one, I chose to separate going this direction so I'd have my rectangle and then my um, trapezoid. It just seemed easier to me to do it that way. I know they put their line this way, and if you went with that, then you'd have to probably put your line this way as well and realize that this is 20 here, so um, and this is 10, so this would have to be 6 over here. And you'd have to end up doing three different area formulas, which is completely fine. It's not wrong as long as you did it correctly, um, did your math correctly. Um, in the end, no matter what way that you did it, your final answer should be the same as mine, which is 672 feet squared. All right, so now we're going to talk about overlapping figures. So to find the area of overlapping figures, we need to decompose the figures, which sounds a little creepy, doesn't it? All right, so it says find the area of the figure at the right, the square, which is a 12 by 12, and then the rectangle, which is a 12 by 15. Then the sum of those would be 324. Now, this area right here is overlapping, so that's not the area of this shape right here. That's the area of this shape and this shape separately. So that's not going to work for us for what we need. So they're saying, um, let's find the area of the overlapping area and subtract it. Okay, find the area of the overlapping area and subtract it from that 324 that we found. And so we know that um, we can find the pieces that are missing. We know that this height is, whoop, let's do like this. We know that this height is 6, and they're telling us that the height right here is 6. So that means that this other area down here will also be 6. Then they're telling us that this is five, 15, I'm sorry. And so we know that the distance, I don't know if I said area before, I'm sorry if I did, the distance from here to here is 15. Well, they already gave us 8, and so we know that the other part of that would have to be 7 to make up a 15. So now we know that the area is going to be for the base of 7 and the height of 6, which is 42 square units. Now we have to take that and subtract it from the 324. 324 minus 42 is 282 centimeters squared. So if it's overlapping and you find the area of these pieces separately, then you'll have to find the area of this center piece so that you could subtract it out because otherwise you've doubled up on that center piece right there. So I need to subtract at least one of them to be able to account for, um, for the entire figure instead of having that overlapping part doubled. All right, so you're going to do D. Um, go ahead and pause the video. When you come back, we'll do this. Just use the steps from the example number three. They're all right there for you. You know, finding the area of each of the shapes and then adding them together and then find the area of the overlapping and then subtracting. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's really right there cut and dry for you. So go ahead and work on D. Pause the video now. All right, so for this one, I found the area of this rectangle and then I found the area of this rectangle and I added the two together to get 90. Then I needed to find the area of this um, polygon in the middle here uh, except I didn't know the side units so what I need to do is figure out how much that would be. Well if this top one is six total then this bottom is six total. If this section right here is one then that's going to make this section right here five. And I'm going to do the same thing with this other one. If 7 is the whole thing over here, 7 should be the whole side over here. Well, we know that 2 is here, so this leftover section in the middle here is going to be 5. And so I find the area of 5 times 5 is 25 feet squared. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to add the 2 together. Or sorry, I'm going to subtract the 25 from the 90, and I get 65 feet squared. All right, so it is important not to count the area of the overlapping portion twice when finding the area of the overlapping figures. We don't want it twice. That's why we have to subtract it one time because otherwise we've got it on there twice. So example number four, Charlie and his brother Matthew are neighbors in an apartment complex where they share a patio. What is the area of both apartments and the patio? So the patio is overlapping. They share that. So if I'm finding the area of both of the apartments, I'm not going to double up what it is for the um, 
the patio. So finding the area um, of Matthew's apartment right here, we're finding area is 45 times 55, which is 2475. Finding the area for um, Charlie's apartment is 45 times 55, which is also 2475. But that's telling me that both of them get the patio. But if I want to know how much it is all together, I need to take away one of those patios because I didn't get two patios. So we put together our 2475 plus 2475 and we get the 4950 feet squared. But I need to subtract away the patio. Now to figure out what the patio is, then I'm going to have to figure out what the dimensions are because they don't straightforward tell us. But if I know that this side is 55 and I know that this part's 32, then I'm going to have to know that the other side is 23. And so if the other side's 23, I know that that's part of my um, little part in the middle there of the patio. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. I've got that this is um, 45 and this is 22 of the 45. So the difference is going to be the 23. And so I figure that it's 23 by 23 is the area of the patio. So 23 times 23, we find out is 529 feet square, just based on the patio. So I'm going to take the 4950, and I'm going to subtract the area of the patio, and my difference is 4,421 feet squared, and that's my final answer. I know it's a lot to get there, but that's just the way it has to be. All right, and that concludes our video for area of composite figures. If you'd like a more detailed account and some extra um, uh, examples, you can check out Miss Rickfelder's video um, that she has on there. She has an extra 20 minutes on me, so I'm guessing she has a couple more options for you to look at. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. See you in school.